I love this question. There are, oh, there's a wonderful story told in Livy and Appian of a conversation, a meeting between Scipio Africanus and Hannibal. And the story is this. After years of fighting each other, Scipio and Hannibal meet, and Scipio turns to Hannibal and says, how would you rank the three greatest commanders of our time? Hannibal thinks about it and goes, oh, well, first it'd have to be Alexander the Great, and gives his reasons. And then second would be Pyrrhus of Epirus. And Scipio goes, and the third? And he goes, well, that would be myself. Who would I rank as my three generals? Um, and my answer is I wouldn't. I'm going to give you one. And I'm going to tell you this. I'll tell you why. Because this discussion that Scipio and Hannibal purportedly had is based entirely on tactics. When we think of great generals, we think strictly of their tactical action. How do they do in this battle? How do they do in, how do they choose ground? How do they marshal troops? And that's not the correct answer. Battle is uncertain. I mean, look, Hannibal is arguably one of the greatest tactical geniuses of our time. And he got his butt handed to him at Zama. His tactics weren't flawed. There's so many chaotic things you can't control on a battlefield. And making that the measure of a great general is a big mistake, in my opinion. War is the advancement of policy by other means. How does a general advance policy using military strength and get it achieved in the most certain way? And the most certain way is not fighting. So I will give you one general, and that general is Brasidas, a very little known Spartan during the Peloponnesian War. And I wrote about him in a recent article in Smithsonian Magazine. Brasidas in 425 BC was part of a battle against the Athenians called the Battle of Pylos and Sphacteria. And he charged down the gangplank at the front of his men, this Spartan commander, which is this brave, incredibly heroic, tactical thing to do. And it's just beyond stupid. You're charging down a single gangplank. You have five guys on the beach. They all have javelins. He eats a face full of javelins. It's like saving Private Ryan. Remember the scene where the gangplank goes down and everybody gets shot? That's basically the ancient equivalent. And he's badly wounded. He doesn't die. And he then goes north to prosecute the Spartan campaign in northern Greece, campaign around Olynthus. And what we see now is a man who uses soft power. And he wins city after city after city for Sparta without swinging a sword. He uses coercion and diplomacy. He uses threats. He uses fifth columns inside the cities that open the gates to him but he doesn't fight. And I can't prove this, but seeing this in the text, mostly of Thucydides, I can tell you he learned. He learned that when he charged down that gangplank, he almost died and he got nothing done. And the irony is the punchline from all of this is that his final battle of Amphipolis, he loses the bubble and he charges out. Um, and he actually succeeds in routing the enemy in this, but he gets himself killed. So ultimately, his failure to cleave to that caution is what costs him his life. But that ability as a human being to learn from your mistakes and to understand that the ultimate goal of warfare is to prosecute policy by any means you can and to do it without fighting, that makes him one of the greatest generals I've ever seen.